interwebs, Joy Pals here. In my last video, I talked about one of the games I'll be streaming during my 7 days of streaming, Kid Icarus Uprising. In today's video, I'll be taking a look at another game I'll be streaming during the 7 days on Twitch, Fire Emblem Fates. Fates is a very rich game in terms of story and characters, and for anyone who hasn't gotten it yet, I highly recommend picking it up, especially if you live over in Europe because you guys finally have a chance to play this awesomeness. As anyone who's played a Fire Emblem game can tell you, the story is massively driven by every character and their motives. To the very terrifying King Garen, to cute little Elise, to headstrong Hinoka, everyone in Fire Emblem Fates plays a part in the stories that they are in. So for today, I'd like to highlight my top 10 non-royal Fire Emblem Fates characters. Why am I excluding the royals? Well, for one, there's enough to fill an entire army with 10 total playable royal characters. Korin, Azora, Sakura, Takumi, Hinoka, Ryuma, Elise, Leo, Camilla, and Xander. These characters also have some of the strongest stat growths in the game and more than enough airtime to host. So putting them in a popularity contest against, say, Felicia is extremely unfair. In addition, I won't be including the children characters, but don't fret. I'll be making top 10s for both of these categories in the future. With that out of the way, let's draw the bow and fire away at our top 10 favorite non-royal Fire Emblem Fates characters. At number 10, we have Mozu. Now, the reason why I'm putting Mozu so low on this list is because she's truly affected by which route you take. If you play Birthright or Revelations, Mozu will be nothing short of killing machine for you as her strength growths are at 60% at the very least, with luck and speed being even higher. As for Conquest, well, she'll be a bit of a bummer. There's not a lot of grinding time, making sure you need to play smart in order to effectively grind Mozu in Conquest. The problem is, she's already behind plenty of levels, with the likes of Effie and your character being massively boosted at this point, making grinding her a very rough challenge. It's usually best leaving her behind in Conquest as a result. As for her personality, she's very understandably a girl without self-esteem, as her entire town got destroyed right before her eyes, including her own mother being taken down by a faceless, right in front of her face. She will grow her self-confidence in her supports though, especially when it comes to Silas. If this were strictly speaking upon birthright or revelations, she'd be a couple notches higher but because this is an all-around, she gets the number 10 spot. For number 9, we have Odin. Now, don't get me wrong, I love Odin as well as his special skill in this game. I even love how he came back with Severa and Inigo, who unfortunately won't be making this list. My main problem with him in this game is his dialogue is a bit old at this point. Sure, it's still funny and a bit ridiculous, especially with his new set of supports, but as a character, I'm kinda over him. Have that to meh magic growths and good luck growths, and you have a mixed bag. There's not much else I can say about Odin. He's a character returning from a previous game doing almost the exact same thing, except this time you have to run into him no matter what you play. It's a bit forced, but I still love the guy. Plus I figured at least one of the returning children needed a spot on this list. So I'll give him the number nine. Number eight. Jacob. Jacob, in a brief nutshell, is what every personal servant should be. He's intelligent, charming, loyal, and will straight up stab a fool who thinks they can cause harm to their master. As a butler, he serves quite adept on the battlefield. Daggers are one of the best weapons in Fire Emblem Fates, and having the ability to heal yourself while you heal others due to the live to serve skill is quite uncanny for a healing unit. I knew when I was making this list, I'd end up going with at least one of the maids or Jacob on this list. Overall though, Jacob's personality and support stand out much more to me over Felicia's clumsiness and Flora's backstabbiness. As a result, Jacob gets number 9 on this list. Number 7, Tsubaki. Tsubaki makes this list simply because he reminds me of one of my friends in real life. He's always trying to better himself in everything he does even though he's awesome in just about everything. As a unit, Tsubaki is pretty alright. His growth and strength is a bit poor, but he gets very nice defense boosts. 
While his base unit allows him to go the flying route, he's possibly best suited for something non-flying, as bows will render his good defenses relatively useless. What's most fun about him is how he's a perfectionist by announcement, but he tries his best not to show off too much. It makes him slightly annoying, but you can understand that he's just trying to keep everyone's spirits up by encouraging them to do better. He's not everyone's cup of tea, but he's certainly mine. That's why Mr. Perfectionist takes lucky number 7. Number 6 goes to Azama. I'm going to be brief on Azama because there's not much to say on the guy without making things overcomplicated. His personal skill, Divine Retribution, immediately makes him stand out as a healer that doesn't have to wait until promotion levels to be useful. That immediately makes him a much more useful pure cleric, above Sakura and Elise by a long shot. In addition, Azama shines as a very snarky personality, thinking of helping others as below his station and plus being quite ironic as a result. Plus, have you seen that hair? That mane is way too fluffy to not give Azama a spot on this list. Number 5, Perry. Perry, in a nutshell, is the little sister you always wished for but were always terrified to actually have. Perry is obsessed with murder wanting to stab everyone in sight. Isn't that fun? The reason why Perry turned out the way she did though is actually quite tragic. When she was a child, both of her parents were murdered, and Fuss wasn't able to trust anyone around her. As such, she took out anyone who even remotely mistreated her, especially the maids that watched over her when she was just a child. This makes Perry one of a few fully fleshed out characters, and considering she's a Norian character, this makes things all the more interesting. I understand Perry's detractors, but she has more pluses than flaws. And that's enough to take my number 5 slot. My number 4 position goes to Setsuna. Oh boy, where do I even begin with this girl? Setsuna is the poster child for all spacey characters that are scarily powerful. Hinoka's other retainer alongside Azama, Setsuna at first meeting is very incompetent as a retainer, almost as bad as Felicia is as a maid. She has her mind very up there in the clouds, just wanting to kick back and relax. When she lets loose on the battlefield, though, you don't want to be standing in the way of her arrows. In Fire Emblem Fates, the bows are easily the strongest weapons in the game, while magic takes a back seat. This gives Setsuna and the other bow users, such as Takumi and Niles, a very distinct advantage on the battlefield. The reason why I didn't place Niles here is because, even though I love his personality, Setsuna actually makes me bust out laughing when she takes out an enemy. As such, she takes my number 4 spot. Speaking of Takumi though, at number 3 we have one of his retainers and the one you should always marry Takumi to because of their chemistry, Hinata. Nah, just kidding, just kidding, it's a Boro. The reason why Aboro takes the spot is because she has a very similar flesh out to Perry. Both of her parents are dead, but at the same time that's not the reason why she fights. Aboro fights due to her devotion to her liege as well as trying to secure herself a future in fashion. Due to this combination, Aboro sets herself up as a character not limited to the plot of games themselves. She becomes three dimensional as a result able to distinguish her dreams from her reality while still actively pursuing both. It's this kind of drive that I wish to pursue in everyday life. That's why she's so high up on my list at number 3. That being said, there's two more characters I do enjoy more. So let's see who they are, shall we? Number 2, Effie. Remember when I mentioned Fragile Elise? Well, this is her bulky, tree trunk benching retainer who is always hungry. Effie very much serves as a broken character in a very balanced game. In her general class, Effie has an 80% growth in strength with nearly as stellar defense growths. Her resistance isn't half bad either, and she's just fast enough to where she can actually double some enemies as a general. What does that all mean? Simply put, Effie is a character class that's meant to be slow, bulky, but weak to damage. But in a game where magic's weak, Effie quickly becomes an over-the-top powerhouse that's able to take out everyone in sight. She's also quite hilarious due to just how relatable she can be. Sure, not everyone can bench tree trunks, 
but she's almost always hungry and is very devoted to those close to her. As many positives she has, she doesn't have a strong of positives as my number one pick. Topping today's list is none other than Silas. So, what's so special about Silas? Well, for starters, Silas is a mixture of Frederick and Stahl from Fire Emblem Awakening. He's very strong, but he also has a fun, quirky, and determined personality. In the three playthroughs that I've done of Fire Emblem Fates, Silas easily becomes one of the strongest members in my army, usually being rivaled by only Mozu or Effie depending on the route. For a non-royal, he's also given a ridiculous amount of backstory, which goes along the lines of this. As a child, your character and Silas were best friends. You were never allowed outside of the castle walls, but Silas wanted to make sure you were able to live your life to the fullest. As such, he snuck you out, and was nearly killed by the castle guard when you two were caught one day. He became a knight after that in hopes of being able to see you again one day. His romantic supports are also the most heartfelt, taking these stories and making them even further in depth. Just listen to the following bonding line for when you're married to Silas, and you'll see why he's my number one pick. You mean so much to me. You taught me how to be a friend, how to enjoy life, and most of all, you taught me how to love. That's all for today's video. If you like what you saw, please drop a like and subscribe to see more upcoming material. If you'd like to talk to me outside of comments, please follow me on Twitter or see what I'm doing over on Pokemon Online. Links to both are down below in the description. In addition, if you'd like to see my last video where I discussed my favorite non-major Kid Icarus characters, please click the box over on the left. Well, that's all for today everyone. This is Joy Pals, signing out.